All right, we're gonna make a big old batch of peach mountain brandy. I got 10 pounds of peaches, fresh peaches. They're good and ripe. We're gonna remove the seeds out of these. It should be about eight pounds. And when we take the seeds out, we're gonna toss them in the blender. Got three pounds of rye. I got five pounds of premium cracked corn. If you need some cracked corn, get with Phil Billy. He'll hook you up with Jimmy. Um, we're gonna use about a pound and a half of sugar per gallon of water. So we got 25 pounds of pure cane sugar. And if it's not enough to get us to our start of gravity, we'd like to get our start of gravity between uh, 1.07 and 1.08. So we'll add more sugar later if we need. We got 16 gallons of spring water. We got some pectic enzyme we're gonna use to help break down our peaches to get a little bit more flavor. All right, first thing, I'm gonna remove the pits out of these peaches. I got this Vitamix blender. If you got a Vitamix, you know what you got. If you don't have one, use what you got. But if you could buy a Vitamix, I suggest you get one. They're definitely worth the money and they will puree anything. smoothie we're gonna get our hot sugar water ready fire up our burner we're gonna take a pot we're gonna put about two gallons of water in it maybe three we'll see you better put water in any pot before you put it on about three gallons of water we got quite a bit of sugar should be good all right we're hot enough to dissolve our sugar I don't think all oh, this is gonna fit in the one go and if it doesn't we'll just do two rounds let's see Get your mixer. You can use a spoon. You can make you something in there. Now we'll let that keep cooking until it dissolves all the way. All right, we got our fermenting barrel. And while our sugar's cooking off, we we'll dissolve it. We're gonna add our grain. Five pounds of corn. Three pounds of rye. Now it's time to add the peach puree. I'm gonna use a little bit of water to get what's left in this out. You don't wanna waste any of that. And this is what wouldn't fit. Now we're gonna dump our hot sugar water right on that. You don't want your water too hot when you do this or you'll melt your vessel. We definitely don't wanna melt our vessel. All right, we're gonna give that a stir. 
Well, we're gonna let that sit while we finish cooking up the rest of our sugar water. All right, we're gonna add the rest of our hot sugar water. So that's at 25 pounds of sugar. We'll mix this up. We'll let this sit and steep, I guess you'd say, for a little while. And then we're gonna finish adding the water. All right, we'll let it sit for a little while, do its thing, now we're gonna add some water, cool it down. Give her a mix. Let's go ahead and check out and see what our starting gravity is. Round and round she goes. Well, it looks like we're about 1.6-ish. Adjust the gravity. We're just gonna add a little more sugar. Sugar again. Got her up to 1.7, 1.070. And we're just gonna leave it at that. That's fine with me. All right, look like we're about 98 degrees. So we're gonna use this pectic enzyme. And it says use one tenth of a teaspoon per pound of fruit. So you figure we got about eight pounds, eight to ten pounds. So just under one teaspoon of this. And it says you want to put this in an hour before you do your fermentation. So that's one half a teaspoon. And then a small half a teaspoon. So we're gonna stir this up, let this sit for an hour, and then we're gonna pitch our yeast. All right, it's been an hour. So and we're down to about 95 degrees. It's time to pitch our yeast. But before we do, I wanted to do a little pH test. So I got these pH strips. And as you can see, it says they're right between five and six, right where we want to be. Let's double check the digital one. We'll see what it reads. Digital one's reading the same, so. I guess we know we got this thing calibrated, right? Finally. So we're gonna go ahead and add our, our Red Star dating. One to two grams per gallon. A tablespoon is about 10 grams. So we're gonna rock just over three, about three tablespoons. We got 16 gallons of water. So three tablespoons is plenty. We'll mix this up real good. All right, now she's good and mixed. We're just gonna pop our top on. And we're hoping this will ferment off in about 10 days, but usually seven to 14 days. So after five days, we're gonna do a gravity reading. Then we'll do another one in seven days and 10 days. So, see you uh, in five days. It's been five days. It's time to check the gravity. 
And this thing's been working super hard because it's been super hot here. She looks nice. Let's pop her in. So we're looking for one or 0 0.99 reading. Let's see if we can get up close on that. See how she's all the way below. We've cleared that 1.0. As you can see, get to that one, it means all the sugar's gone. And it's time to run this. So now the fun begins. We're gonna strain this twice, and then we're gonna run it. And we're gonna make us some peach mountain brandy. I let this sit for another day, just so it clear up a little bit more. Now we're gonna transfer from this into this. It says about a 15 gallon pan. So we ain't got no pump, so we're gonna use a hose. And then we got this training bag. I'm just gonna put the straining bag on one end. Stick the other end in here, we're gonna suck on the other end. That's all there is to it. We get it out of here and We'll come back to you when we do the other, when we do it again. All right, that's what we caught in the bag. We're just gonna dump this back in here because we're gonna throw this away. So we're gonna take our vessel, clean it out, clean our bag out, and then we're gonna repeat the process and put it back into here so we can let it sit overnight and clear up until we run it tomorrow. 15 gallon pots, about full. Nice and slow. I will spill it. Got our screen, we got our hose. Filtration number two. And then we'll filter it one more time through this thing when we put it in the still. And some people might think that's too much. I just, you know, better too many than not enough. You scorch it one time and you start thinking about it. But we let this sit for a couple hours. Second time through, you can see we didn't catch a whole lot. But we still caught all that, so it's less stuff that could scorch. So we're gonna let this sit for 24 to 48 hours before we run it, let it clear up a little bit more before we put it in the still. So see you in a couple of days. We let this sit for 24 hours and it cleared up a little bit. Now we're gonna pump it into our K. Yeah, I said pump. I went and got a pump at Harbor Freight for 20 bucks. I'm done sucking on hose. So we're just gonna drop this in here. And I highly recommend you fill up your keg while it's on your burner. That way you don't have to pick it up. We'll take our bag, slide it around our pump. And it's just in case we missed anything big, which I don't think we did. We got it pretty good, but you know, better safe than sorry. I'm just gonna drop that down in there. Plug her in. See how she works. She's quiet. Check her out. We're gonna let that fill, fire up our still, and while it's warming up, we're gonna make our primer for our thump keg. We're gonna make the primer for our thump keg. 
And you know, I like to prime my thumb keg with uh, some high proof alcohol. I got a half gallon of 100 proof I'm gonna put in there. And we're gonna puree these peaches. And they're in heavy syrup. We'll get that real good peach flavor. We're gonna infuse all that peach flavor in there. Now some people in, um, prime their thumb kegs with mash, the leftover mash that they have. Some people use mash, some people use water to really clean it up. Um, some people use tails. You can use whatever you want. For me, I like to prime it with high-end alcohol. You put quality in, you're gonna get quality out. Okay. Always that one. puree and a half gallon of 100 proof. Okay, it's getting hot. I'm gonna go ahead and put this thing together. So we got a rubber gasket to go underneath. Create our seal. We got our two inch tri clamp. Hold this on. And I'm sure I've told you this before, but this piece right here was made by Flatlander Stills. And everything you're about to see is made by Flatlander Stills. So it's really cool to be able to take a couple kegs, make you a still for water installation or whatever else you want to use it for. Okay, and this is just my starter rig. I'm gonna do all this taller and bigger. So this thing right here, specifically made for this thumb K, custom made by Flatlander Stills. Before we put our thumb together, we gotta prime it. Put our half gallon of 100 proof in there. Not all of them, we need some of them. Peach puree. Oh, that smells good. Like a smoothie. I ain't wasting none of that. Now we're gonna put this together. And all it is is a two inch adapter with a three quarter inch pipe running through. So your steam comes in the top collects in the bottom, comes up, catches in here, comes out here to your condenser. What a cheap way to make a steel with a thumb cane. check for leaks and if anything's leaking we'll tighten up accordingly let's go ahead and hang our condenser on here might as well fly big condenser We're gonna set up this, our water pump. This water pump here is like 20 bucks at Walmart. Works fantastic. Just get you a cooler. I always recommend using a cooler. Keeps your water cooler a little longer. So remember you want your water flow in at the bottom. So it fills up this whole jacket with nice cool water. If you run it in the top, you're just gonna have a stream that fills up the bottom of it bottom of the pipe the whole time it's not going to condense properly so you can use hose clamps you got some hose clamps you know we ain't got no hose clamps we're just going to use some electrical tape
We're gonna dump a couple gallons of water in our cooler, put a bag of ice in it, and then I'll come back to you when this thing starts getting warm. It's gonna be a little while. We're getting warm. See, we're up to about 110. Now, when it comes to thermometers, I, ain't, I don't use the temperature on the thermometer. It's more of a gauge to help you along the way. I do more by feel. Um, you know, see, we're hot here, too hot to touch down here. But we're warm here and feel it gets cooler. So you'll feel it travel along this and get hotter and hotter and it'll be so hot you can't touch it. This is still real cool. So we'll come back to you once we're warm enough and we start collecting heads. We just started dripping. So our heads just started. So we're gonna catch 50 milliliters per gallon of heads. We got 15 gallons. Quick math says 750 milliliters. So we're gonna fill up 750 milliliters in this first jar, toss that poison out, and then we're gonna start catching our hearts. And I got my ice in my cooler, got my lid on to help keep it cool longer. And so we'll come back to you when we get to the ends of the heads. All right, we just reached our 750 milliliter mark of heads. We're gonna swap this out, I throw this away, keep it for your campfire. Just don't drink it. I recommend dumping it out. That way you don't accidentally mix it in and drink it. So, all right, we're gonna start catching our first half gallon. We got our first half gallon. Let's check and see where our proof is. Get you one of these lids, it'll save you from spilling. It's like we're sitting right at about 158. It's not bad for our first full half gallon. It means I expect the next one to be about 150-ish. So we'll come back at the end once uh we're all done. Let's go ahead and give her a try. That's hot. Definitely taste that peach. And that corn. Woo, she's warm. Looks like we got about three gallons of high proof alcohol. And that's before we go and proof her down. Um, that's, you know, I usually get about a gallon of unproof per five gallons of mash. So about 15 gallons of mash, about three gallons. So now we're going to um, take most of this and put it in a big jug. And then we're going to taste our cuts to see how far we want to add to it for the flavor. And then once we get it all in the jug, we're going to proof it down with distilled water. I recommend distilled water with no minerals added. I feel like the minerals in there could um, cause a little cloudiness and you shine. Nobody wants cloudy shine. So, you know, here's the fun part. We're going to taste test, sip, combine, get it to how we want it, proof it down to 100 proof using distilled water, and then we'll come back at you with the taste test. Yep. All right. We're going to try this Peach Mountain Brandy. It's proof down to 100 proof, make it a little more drinkable. Smells good. Taste that corn right off the front. And that rye. It's spicy, that rye. Once all the heat and grain flavor goes away, you get the peach on your lips. Yeah, that's something you gotta refrigerate. Yeah, it'd be a lot, be a lot better cold for sure. Yeah. But for you know, I want that cold warm test. It's not bad, man. It's peach. Not. A little peach mountain brandy. Yeah, you taste the peaches. Came out pretty good. I know it was a it went quick at the fourth of July party you had on Sunday. Yeah. 
Yep. And it was cold. It was definitely a lot, a lot of better cold. Was drank. Yeah, a lot of moonshine, banana brandy, cotton candy moonshine. Two jars of cotton candy. Yeah. Right Big jar of peach mountain brandy. It was a good time. Hell but yeah. If you can make this, make it. If you got any questions, ask. Got um, flies are everywhere from that party. Yeah. Bastards. Hopefully I'll see you Saturday, July 10th in Beattyville. Fuck your mama, bitch. <laughs>